the 14 UK overseas territories have 20 times the biodiversity of the UK mainland. They are scattered across all seven seas, from the Antarctic to the tropics. They are bound in life, but they're also fragile. Such tiny islands, often with unique species, have been all too easily damaged. One of the biggest problems has been the introduction of predators. Ascension Island, in the centre of the Atlantic, and just a few degrees south of the equator, is typical of many of the overseas territories. It was invaded by cats, rats and mice. The seabirds that once covered Ascension have never encountered such animals before. Birds were totally unadapted to compete with introduced predators. They had basically no defence. And as a result, their numbers were devastated. The cats, rats and mice ate their way through almost unimaginable numbers of seabirds. Vast waves of the island that were once home to millions of birds fell silent. These white splotches on the rocks, this is the baked guano of bird populations that were wiped out up to a century ago. But there was hope. The bird life had one safe haven. This little island here is called Boston Bird Island, and it's sufficiently far and isolated from the mainland for the rats, the cats and the mice to be unable to swim to it. Many of the bird species became extinct on the mainland of Ascension, but they survived there. Boson Bird Island gives a glimpse of what the whole of Ascension must once have looked like and conservationists on the island are working hard to recreate those scenes. By 2004, the main island was cleared of cats and soon afterwards, the birds began to reclaim their old home. Introduced predators have devastated many of the overseas territories. The forests of the island of Grand Cayman in the Caribbean were once home to a unique kind of lizard, the Cayman Blue Iguana. But by the start of the 21st century, introduced predators had all but wiped it out. Then, Fred Burton and a team of island conservationists set up a breeding station they captured the last few animals in the wild. And along with a few animals who were already in captivity, they began to build up iguana numbers. It was very successful. So 100 a year? Yeah, yeah, so you can see, you can see how the numbers are really That's like, great. Like, like going crazy. Now they can begin to release the animals back into Grand Cayman's forests. But it's not just predators that have wreaked havoc on the biodiversity of the overseas territories. Introduced grazers have eaten their way through many unique plants. Nowhere has been more affected than St. Helena in the South Atlantic. Some plants, like this bastard gumwood tree, are only just hanging on. This is one of the last two remaining bastard gumwood trees in the world. There's this tree here and another on the other side of the island, several kilometers away, and that's it for the species. The entire effort to save this tree from extinction rests on these two individuals. But this is not the only species standing on the brink of oblivion. When I met Rebecca Cairns Wicks, I was astounded by the scale of the problem. How critical for the species on St. Helena did it become? We're talking the last hour 
we're talking about species that were down to single individuals, which means this is the, was the last individual in the world of this species. Wow. So it doesn't get more critical or, or life on the brink than that. And, and conservationists were faced not just with one species down to a single individual, several species down to single individuals. So the conservationists on St Helena were dealt an incredibly hard task to try and recover these species that were right on the brink of extinction. Now, a nursery has been set up to build up the numbers of these rare plants. Conservationists scour the island for the last remaining individuals of the rarest species and collect their seeds for propagation in the nursery. So uh, this, this one we have over here yep. is the uh, Centralina boxwood. This, this one had disappeared. Um, disappeared off the records for about a hundred years and then uh, a local man walking across the hillside one day found this bunch of plants that he didn't recognize so from there you know we, we rediscovered this particular plant. The growing seedlings are carefully tended and eventually we get to the point where we have a nice strong seedling in the bag here, and this one now is ready to go back and be planted in the wild. Many of the islanders are working hard to restore their native flora. This is the Millennium Forest, a large-scale replanting project which has already seen many rare species brought back from the brink. So, um, so in 12 or, or 13 years, it should be around the size of these ones nearby us. Some of the problems faced by wildlife on the overseas territories are not due to introduce predators or grazers, but to us. On the island of Montserrat, there's a spectacular creature that suffered from being very tasty. Yeah, they got one. They got one? Yeah. The mountain chicken, a giant frog. The frogs are now so rare that conservationists are monitoring individual animals. We first caught this individual uh, last summer, so we've been tracking this one for nearly a year. Um, Age-wise, it's it's fairly adult frog. Really? It's a decent size, yeah. So why is he called the mountain chicken? Well, the mountain chicken, it's a very interesting name, obviously there are no feathers, but uh, in the thighs here there's a lot of um, flesh, it's a big meaty thigh, obviously they're a very large frog, um, and people actually used to hunt and eat these frogs, so they used to take the legs off and fry them up in a pan, and people used to say that it would look like the chicken wing and it would taste like chicken. They were hunted out a lot. Um, here in Montserrat there was a lot of hunting going on in the residential areas so the population was reduced very much. But he out here in the centre hills for example there was still a thriving population despite the hunting. But the mountain chickens also face another problem, a deadly fungus called chytrid, which is threatening many kinds of frogs right around the world. So every time a mountain chicken is caught it's checked for chytrid. The tests that we run will actually not only tell us whether this frog has chytrid, but it will also tell us how much chytrid is on the skin. So they can have a partial infection without, without a killing? Or? That's right, yeah. They can be carrying the chytrid, but they might not be showing any clinical signs of it yet. Since my visit, the chytrid has struck again. And many of the remaining mountain chickens on Montserrat have sadly died. This makes the breeding population in captivity more important for the survival and future of the species. Protecting individual species is an urgent necessity when they're so rare. But it's far better to protect the whole environment and that's what's beginning to happen around the overseas territories. The British Indian Ocean Territory
consists of the Chagos Archipelago, a series of huge coral atolls and tiny tropical islands. In 2010, the seas around the archipelago were declared a marine reserve, protecting an area twice the size of the UK mainland. This is the biggest fully protected marine reserve on Earth. Beneath the waves, huge shoals of fish swim through some of the cleanest waters on the planet. And the coral here is healthy and vigorous, growing in rich reefs that shelter a vast range of fish and invertebrates. In 2015, the UK government announced an even bigger marine protected area in the waters surrounding Pitcairn Island in the Pacific Ocean, in seas that are just as rich as the Chagos Archipelago. Then, in early 2016, the UK government announced their intention of creating a similar marine reserve around Ascension Island, and beyond that, an ambitious plan to create a series of blue belts, marine reserves around all of the overseas territories. Even so, many plants and animals remain critically endangered and their future depends on the dedicated conservationists across all the territories that are working to secure their survival. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft, for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.